it. Like when I wasn't doing music and I wasn't pursuing my passion and walking in my purpose, I was kind of like unhappy, like a little bit, kind of like depressed a little bit because I didn't, I didn't have no direction in life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So certain things that was making me mad, it was really like due to my own self and shit because life is a choice. You know what I'm saying? Like I chose to be working at this job and I can't be mad because they are paying me even if I don't like this shit. But I don't want that shit to start trickling into my own life because, you know what I'm saying, I'm not I'm not taking the initiative to do what I want to do. So I think this, if, if you live in your purpose, man, and you be true to yourself, you know what I'm saying, with certain things, I feel like I feel like that's a good life. Still getting money with the same niggas. I can't work at 9 to 5 because I'm too ambitious. I'm way too driven. The reason I had to start a business is more than just making a living. I'm ready. Let's go, man. Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Live Journey Podcast. It's your host, Jay Gaines, and here today, I got my brother Malik X I'm in here. back. Hey. I'm in the building. What's going on, man? Malik X, LFTG. You already know. How you feeling today, bro? Man, I'm feeling great, man. I'm an early morning type of nigga, for real. Yeah, you are. He's so like, he's so like, you really <laughs> catching me like... Yeah, this like prime Malik right now, yeah. Cause he was like, yeah, let's let's reschedule for the morning. I'm like, the morning. Yeah. Sheesh. I'm an all day type of nigga, but the I morning, wake up, give me some coffee, blaze one. I'm ready, man. And get the day rolling. Get the day rolling. I feel it, man. So, firstly, let everybody know about your nominations, man. What you? What you oh yeah, doing? man. So, definitely wasn't expecting this shit, man. But I got nominated by Scene Magazine for best of 2019, best hip hop artist. That's real. So I'm up there, man. I think. uh who was in the ranks? Uh, Toby, some dude named Toby. And I actually met Toby before. He cool dude. Mm -hmm. He did some work with my producer, Savage. Fresh Produce. Shout out to Fresh Produce. We actually got a show at the Grog Shop this Saturday mm -hmm. for their release party for their uh, album, Phases. Okay, okay. So I'm one of the performers, so come check that out. But yeah, man, he got nominated, man. That's right. I'm coming for it, man. 2019, man. I really feel like this is my I, I, year, I man. I've been out here grinding, man. I feel like I deserve it, man. For Listen, real. Listen, y'all. This man yeah. posts on Instagram every day and new stuff. He don't be recycling. I don't shit. rehash shit, bro. <laughs> yeah. This be be new content. That be new pictures that we took. Yep. New videos, new flows. I got. I just bought a new notebook. For uh -oh. real. I, I take down. it everywhere I go. I respect that. So what you be putting in a notebook? Like you write just appointments in there. Um, no, or? I put the appointments in the phone. I try okay. to. I try to keep it organized. Appointments yeah. in the phone, and it's strictly just creative shit. It just usually be uh songs, lyrics, stuff about shows. That's real. Man. Yeah, this is all creative stuff. That's real. Man. And I like I take my notebook with me everywhere because I do not like to waste an idea. Mm -hmm. Like if something like literally if I, if a, some shit pop in my head and I get the flowing enough, I'm about to pull the car over, write that shit down, and then keep on moving. Like I be throwing my niggas off sometimes. You know that's real though because I hate yeah. when I'm driving something. I think this genius idea. Now like, hell yeah, I'm gonna write it down later. I'm gonna do it later. And then nope, you are gonna forget that shit. Yep. So if it's like really hot and I be fucking with it, I will pull the car over like for real hey, and write that shit down. That's what you gotta do. Shit. Yeah. Pull, it down, pull over, write it down. Yeah. We ain't, we ain't wasting no ideas, man. We hot right now, so everything. Hey, I feel it. We keeping it. I feel it, man. So you still on your journey of uh, dropping a song every week? Yeah, every week I'm about to drop a song tomorrow. So it's every Friday. Uh, every yeah, Friday? yeah. Okay. We we usually do it on Friday, but it just depends on how the week go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't always get in the studio. Right. Like my nigga do got a job, he got a life. Oh, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. We other things be happening, but every single week. So if I can get two done, then we'll drop during the week. But it's usually on a Friday. Yeah. Okay. So and that started with the whole fourth quarter Fridays that we was doing during the fourth quarter 2018. I just about to so ask. it was every Friday. Then it just became like shit. If I get the song done on Monday, it's coming out on Monday. So, whenever you go in and record it, and they, you know, mix and match, do all that stuff yeah. to it, that's when you're dropping it. I'm dropping it, yeah. And we working so fast, like, me and Savage got a good chemistry. Mm -hmm. So, he already know how my voice is supposed to sound. Like, he got presets, and because mm -hmm. we really locked in and shit. So, right, it don't right. take long, and I already know my shit. Like, even if I just wrote it that day, mm -hmm. I'm about to spit that shit. He about to mix that shit. He going to send me the uh, email, and that shit is out to the public, man. We ain't holding it. I respect that, man. Yeah. So, who's your producers, man? Uh, my producers I'm working with right now, my dude, Savage Royale. Shout out to Savage Royale. Make sure you go follow my nigga, man. One of the hardest producers coming out to Cle uh, Cleveland, CLE right now. And then my other bro, Macklin. I'm working with a dude, uh, Macklin Bilski. Mm -hmm. He just an overall dope creative, man. He like a Rick Rubin mixed with an alchemist. Like, uh, Rick Rubin? Yeah, he kind of rap. He oh, produce. Shit. He f do photography. Like He just got a good creative mind. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm locking in, um, doing one, me and Mac doing the whole project, and then me and Savage doing the whole project. So it'll be out, like, spring, summertime. Oh, so you oh you got shit coming already for spring or something? Yeah, for sure, yeah, man. The, uh, the whole 2019 is uh -huh. over. Yeah. Like, we, <laughs> we done mapped out the whole year. Like, I'm yeah. already on 2020, bro, for the real. The takeover continues. Yeah, for real, oh, man. Ambition don't die, man. Yeah. I, I respect that, man. So what got you on that? 
that journey of just man having this ambition that you have, bro, and the consistent ambition that you have. It's just in me, man. Mm -hmm. Like I really can't define it like no more than that. Like it's just in me. Like I have a passion mm -hmm. for what I'm doing. That's real. You know what I'm saying? I'm really passionate about music and I really want to just turn this into a career and I'm making the moves to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Day in and day out, I put my all into this and I feel like I'm gonna get I'm gonna get it all back. You know, I make sacrifices and everything. And that's just what it is, man. Like the ambition, it's just in me, man. I'm just hungry. That's but real. it it has grown, you know what I'm saying? Like I've got more confident mm -hmm. in myself, more confident in my direction, more focused in the things that I want to achieve and more goal oriented. So it's like, bam, that's what we about to do. So we just started taking off. But the whole concept for dropping a song, like whenever, I actually got that from Savage. Mm -hmm. Like when we first linked up in the studio, we was just, um, I was working on a couple songs and I was going to hold them. It was actually High Demand, yeah. my song High Demand. So I recorded it and I held it, I held it for like a couple weeks and shit. And then um, he was like, you know, like, what you holding it for? for you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what's the weight? And at this point in my career, even though I am building a fan base and there's no knock to anybody that's following me and check my music, I really love and appreciate that. But the world isn't just checking for me. You know what I'm saying? I have to make the world check for me. You know what I'm saying? Even now, right. since I've been dropping so consistently, and even people that have been seeing me do this shit mm -hmm. really take it seriously now. Like, this nigga is for real. Like, yeah, and this nigga is getting yeah. better every time he does it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, fuck it, man. Let's just start dropping everything. And then we still working on album stuff. Certain things yeah, yeah, be yeah. real hard. They be like, all right, we're going to put that one up. Mm -hmm. We're going to say that one. But other than that, man, we just dropping it, man. Just keeping it going. Staying in the people's face. And then with this generation, everything moves so fast. Man. With social Facts. media, people want new shit all the time. You know what I'm saying? We drop a song, they bumped it this week. Now they want something new. Man, we want something else. And we What's just, up? you know what I'm saying? The way I'm working, like, uh -huh. I can meet that demand. Like, shit, we can have a new joint every week. Man, I love it, bro. Yeah. Because that's why I like my artists, honestly. I mean, I like consistency, for real. Yeah. That's why I like, like you said, how you dropping something every week. And then, every of course, week. you working on, you know, the albums and the mixtapes on the side, you know. And Yeah, hey, we working, man. We trying good. to get it. That's good, We trying man. to get it right now. So the takeover continues. Is that is that it? Is that it? Um, is that what you be saying? Is that the uh, is that the, is that the slogan? Is that the slogan? Yeah, that's the slogan, man. The takeover continues. Uh -huh. Ambition never dies, man. So what got you hip to that that slogan, man? Um, actually, uh, the takeover continues came from a song that I did uh, the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. Um, I woke up on New Year's, still at the party from the night before. Oh, I remember. Went, that yeah, that went to go buy the notebook, mm -hmm. wrote the song, and I dropped it the same day. But the fourth quarter, it was over. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We recorded from October through December. Now right. it's a new year. So I'm like, nigga, it, it, it continues. Like, right, right. Takeover continues. And ambition never dies. It's just become like a slogan of mine. Like, to just represent never give up on your dream. Like, never give up. Like, I don't understand. let anything kill your ambition. Keep striving for that shit day in and day out. If niggas not supporting, if they not believing, like, make them niggas believe in you. Make them niggas, real. Make them niggas feel you. So that's where ambition never dies, man. It's real. really motivational. Real, that's real. Like man. a lot of my shit is motivational. Like a lot of my favorite artists that I listen to. What up, Dab? Dab in the house. Breakfast with Dab. That's hey. another. Uh, that's hey, another dope dude. Yeah, 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 they got yeah. Y'all got a link, man. He do his thing too. He he also uh, he a rapper too, man. That's he spit real? too. Okay, okay. Yeah, he do his thing with the media side, but um. Yeah, it's just motivational, man. Some of my favorite artists, they they lyrics be motivational. It be powerful shit in there. Mm -hmm. And that's what I be wanting to put in my music. You know, like drop little jewels, little motivational shit for people that's going to hear that shit mm -hmm. so they can keep on doing what they doing, man. Keep the inspiration flowing. That's that's the key to it, man. Yeah. So what you're trying to get out into the world is pretty much inspire people to follow their dreams. Or yeah, like, I'm okay. like the poster child for that, man. I yeah, feel like I'm the real. poster child for like niggas that's following their dreams and won't give up, like no matter man. what. He dead ass serious too. Like this man. Yeah, I'm wait, dead wait, serious. We brought a son <laughs> here. We brought a son here. I'm like, oh, he's serious about this. I'm like, serious as fuck, serious. man. Bring your kid to work day, man. See his dad doing his thing, man. To inspire him too. Like whatever he want to be in life. That's real. You know man. what I'm saying? I'm not necessarily encouraging him to be like a rapper behind me. You. Whatever he want to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be here to support him. And you know, the world is yours, man. Ain't no limits. That's real, man. Yeah. That's real. Let's rewind back a little bit, man. So what got right. you into music? I've got to ask you that at first. Uh, what got me into music? Yeah. Like, like taking it serious? Taking it serious. Or not, um, man, that's the beginning of it, period, bro. I just always been in love with music, man. Like, you know, more so hip-hop. I fell in love with hip-hop. Deeply in love with it, like, 14. Mm -hmm. I was listening to Music Choice one day, and um, Nas, The World Is Yours came on. So I don't know what... Because I've yeah, I've been a fan of hip hop since you know a kid. You know my mom played hip hop. She played mm -hmm. Pac and right, right. but then also R and B like Mary J and a lot of things influenced me growing up. But when I heard that song, it was like damn man, 
I want to write something. I want to tell a story like that. And I went back, started digging in the crates, listening to like a lot of classic albums that, you know, because I was born in 91, you know, so I didn't get to experience the 90s and the golden yeah, era. Yeah. So I kind of went back. Like when everybody, like I wasn't a big Wayne fan at first. Like when Wayne, when niggas jumped on Wayne Dick, like when niggas was on on all that yeah. shit, I really wasn't on it, man. Like niggas thought I was weird. Like I was listening to Nas and shit. Like oh, so you was taking it back? I'm yeah, I'm weird. listening to Nas and Wu Tang and AZ. They're like, nigga, what the fuck? I'm listening nope. to Raekwon and nice. Mob Deep and shit. So I went back, dug in the crate, started writing. Ever since 14, man, and I just been doing it ever since. But at 23, mm -hmm. when I got fired from my last job, I was working at the Roxino, the Hard Rock Roxino oh, yeah, on yeah, Northfield. Yeah, yeah. I was working out there and I got fired. It was like over some shit I said. Like I was serving in the uh, buffet or whatever. And they was always fucking with niggas. Like they get to firing niggas for dumb shit. Yep. So like me and you co workers, we just talking and shit. I'm like, man, I hate this job, man. Like fuck this job mm -hmm. for real. Like, I ain't talking loud and shit. Yeah, we yeah. just talking. Yeah. So somebody happened to overhear that shit and snitched on me. So when the uh, head chef came through, Chef Danny, he's a fucking asshole. I don't think he worked it no more. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, Chef Danny. <laughs> but you know what? I appreciate you. Let me continue the story why I appreciate you. So uh, he like, so I heard you hate your job. I'm like, yeah, I do. Like, I don't like this place. Like, but I come in here and do my job every day. I don't have to like it. You can't tell that I don't like it. Right. Suspended me for like 10 days. They sent me a certified letter in the mail. Like, you're fired. Don't come back. This and the third. That's I'm like, you know what? That was like right before my uh, 23rd birthday. Mm -hmm. I went to uh, my dude Unc had some equipment and shit. Mm -hmm. It's like some basic ass equipment. I recorded a song called Deep Vibe. I put that shit out, let my friends and family hear it and shit. And I just been going ever since. Like, fuck it. I'm about to go all the way in. So what that song talk about? Like, what was the, um, you know, your focus on that song? Um, It was real reflective. Like, when I think back to that song, like, it was real reflective. And I, I like to get introspective and reflective in my music anyway. Mm -hmm. But it, it was deep, though. Like, sometimes I talk about things that I wrote back in the day mm -hmm. and it's like it happens now but you have to watch what you speak into existence like For real? i'm a firm believer of that shit that's why i always keep speaking like oh who the fuck is this dang oh man it's all good well, at least a live story oh yeah, yeah we yep, still going yep, we're we're going. Now, hey look don't call me right now i'm i'm conducting an interview i can't put my shit on airplane mode i'm working right now I feel it. so um it was a deep song man but like i was saying I speak a lot of things into existence. Right. That's why I be trying to watch what I'm saying now. But yeah, when I look at look back to that song, it kind of like spoke. It was like prophetic almost. Yeah. Like you know, they yeah. say, "Be careful what you ask for." Yeah, whatever you put out to the universe, it will come back times too. Hell yeah! But I definitely Hell. polished my uh, style up since then. I don't even know where you can find that song. It's hey, on like uh, my old sound. How about say, how many years ago you make that song? Like four. Like four no, you know, and I probably wrote that song probably like way before. It was like some pre-written verses that I had. So okay. I probably wrote that song when I was like, like 19, 20. Word? So, yeah. so was that job like the last, you know, nine to five you had or like? Um, no, I done had a, I done had a couple like okay. jobs here and there mm -hmm. and shit. Like, but more so I just be just trying to just do what I got to do to make money off oh, the man. music. And however I got to get it. That's how, that's how you know, by any means necessary. I ain't going to put it out there like, well, you know, with Cardi B exposed, what she be doing. Oh, okay. Just do what you got to do. All right. Everybody. Sometimes you got to get your hands dirty, man. You got to do a little dirt coming from where I'm from. But, you know, but yeah, full time with the music right now. Yeah. I respect that, man. So how? So what made you just want to go full time? One day you just like, fuck it. I'm, I'm taking it serious. I'm going full time or. And it's like, I don't like, I never like working a job. Me That's why like sure. High Demand is like one of my favorite songs. Like people ask me like, what's a favorite song? I never thought about it. But a song to like really define me as an artist and kind of like what I stand for is high demand. Like right, fucking right. nine to five. Like I don't want to be in here working all these hours for the next man dream. I don't want to do that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if you want to be, and there's no knock to people that work jobs. That's like yeah. if you want to work and be somebody's employee and you happy with that, you make a living off that. That's great. That's not what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to make music for a living. I want to travel the world. I want to tour. I want to inspire people. Right. And I know I can make money off of doing that. I can make a living off of that. That's real. You know what I'm saying? Because I've seen it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's people out here doing it. Like, this is a realistic, you know what I'm saying, real. dream. If, if Some people will say that it's not. Like, oh, man, you're trying to be a, a rapper. You're trying to be Jay-Z. Yeah. You know, they always throw Jay name in there and shit. Like, like it's possible. It it's so many people online right now mm -hmm. with a fan base and a following you've never heard of. Man, I know a few got, people like Got that. shows going. Yep. You yep. know what I'm saying? And I, I would be happy with something like that. You know, I don't need the whole world to necessarily know who I am. But the people that I touch and that's fucking with me, 
then you know what I'm saying? Then that's yeah. cool. I'm making a career. I'm making a living out of it. True. And it's making me happy. Like, I wasn't happy working at the fucking chocolate bar making desserts. Like, yeah, yeah. this is a cool job. It's a means to an end. Niggas got to get paid. Bills got to get paid. Children got to eat and all of that. But it's like, it's other ways to make it out here, man. So I'm just... I'm chasing my dream, man, head first, man. I feel like it's about to pay off. It's, it, it is starting to pay off. Salute. I respect yeah. that, man. But it's work, though. That. People be thinking, like, this shit is not a job because it's not traditional. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, man, I have to get up at 8 in the morning and go clock in and follow these rules. Or I might be part of my job is going to network with people. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Meeting people, being out here, making contacts. And it may be at a bar at a club or we, yeah, we smoking it, it or whatever but it's like yeah. this shit is still a job though right. like i still have to go record music i still have to promote shows i still have to get out here and touch people day by day so yeah man i'm full time with this shit right now man. it is man i be telling yeah. people if you want your dreams to be taken seriously you got to go full time with them you got to really hell yeah and i think in. people are really taking me serious now yeah. not like they wasn't before yeah but like people know like when it comes to this music this rapping shit right. like i do this shit Oh yeah, I see For real. all over on all like the little uh, top artists in Cleveland. Yeah. nominees. I've been peeping it. For real, That's yeah. how I first saw you. I was like, oh, this guy's nominated. I think I follow him. Check out yeah. your music and stuff, man. It's going. For sure. I and you know, the that. music stand for it too. I ain't just one of them, like a lot of rappers, they got the good rapper image. Like, man, this nigga, oh, yeah. this nigga yeah. image is yeah. cold, man. He look like he should be doing some dope shit. You hear the music and his ass is trash. Yep. Like, niggas really fuck with the music. My persona, everything I got going on and match, and it's just like... It's what it is, man. That's real. So how's the networking aspect of everything, man? Out here, you know, getting out here and meet different people and yeah. different fields. How's that going for That's you? That's going, man. My networking is is A1 right now. Like, good situations is good situations. All collaborations aren't good, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that there's got to be any hate or anything like that. Like, I just I just be moving, man. That's all you need I just be moving. I be getting nothing but love for real. I get some hate, but, you know, I come with the territory, but it's, it's the love is outweighing yeah. that shit, so... I'm yeah, glad you said that, man. Yeah. I be telling people, look, the love, I mean, there's some hate out there, but yeah. I feel like the love honestly outweighs But you know, hate. I love the hate, though. Like, I, I, I love it. Yeah. I love when niggas be hating, like, damn, who the fuck is Malik? Like, why, why, why should he get this? Like, nigga, why are you watching me? Because mm -hmm. I inspire you. Like, a lot of rappers yep. be lurking and shit, all in my story, never liking my shit. You yep. watching. Yep. You watching. You see this shit, man. I inspire you. That's okay. Yep. That's what I'm here to do, man. And then people should also realize your superpower, like, somebody said this is not my quote. Just be you, man. It's only one you. And it's only one Malik X, man. And his ambition doesn't die. That's real. And the takeover is continuing, like, right now. I respect that. <laughs> I respect that, man. Yeah, man. I ain't think about these niggas, man. These niggas be thinking about me. Hey, that's how it's supposed yeah. to be, though, man. Like I said, your lovers and your haters and the ones that it's helping yeah. you elevate, to be honest, man. Like you said, they watching your stories. What's up, little buns? We see you. What's going on? Hey. Hello. What's up, son? He got the crowd going, y'all. Yeah. All right, for sure, man. Well, I got a few questions for you, brother. All right, I'm ready. Matter of fact, I know I'm off by heart already. All right. All right, do you feel that you are immortal? Do I feel like I'm immortal? Immortal. Yep. Um, Physically, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm very immortal, yeah. but um, as far as, like, leaving my music and my legacy here, I feel like that shit is going to definitely stand the test of time, like, way when I'm gone. Like, my music sure. will still be here. So that's and, then, and then through my kid, you know, my son. Oh, that's 100. Yeah. That's real. So, yeah, I kind of am immortal. Like, yeah. When you think about it, yeah, so that's yeah, your goal to leave, leave behind a legacy, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it definitely puts some respect on my name, man, for real. That's and real. then the legacy that come up after me, like, I want my kids, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren to be at least financially free. Yeah. Like, no matter what they pursue in life, this family got you financially. Because at the end of the day, whatever you choose to do on your own path is your own path, like, that's why I didn't name my son after me. Like, I didn't want to name him Malik Jr. Like, I gave him his own name. Right, right. We share the same last name. The lineage live on, but you got to be your own man. So whatever you choose to do, you're going to be financially free. You won't have to go through a struggle like I did. I so that's that. the legacy I want to leave behind. Like, it need to be a picture in my kids, great grandchildren mansion, like picture of me prestigious. Like, nigga, that's... Grand, yeah, that's granddaddy right there. That nigga, that nigga laid it down. Hey, nigga, we still, we still good. Like, yeah, we still eating. That's real, man. Yeah. I, I tell people, man, I feel like our generation is the one to break that generational curse. You yeah, know I, I mean? feel, I feel like we is yeah. too. I really feel like that, yeah. man. Yeah. It has to be. It yeah. has to, it's, it's too you much can feel out it. here. You can feel it. Yeah. yeah, it's happening. I be telling people, man, a lot of people be like, I don't know. I'm like, man, I think so. The way everybody out here moving, doing their own thing. And yeah. honestly, at this point, it's all about sticking to it for real. Hell yeah. It's all about the execution. 
That's you can have a plan all day, man. If you don't execute that shit, it don't even matter. That's real, man. Yeah. So what's the day in your life? Oh, man. Day in my life is kind of wild, man. And it really varies from day to day. Mm -hmm. Like uh, this week uh, for spring break, my son is over here with me. So it kind of like having having kids ground you a little bit. It kind of like focus you and humble you with certain things. But um, I, yeah, my life is I, I can't even really tell you, bro. A lot be going yeah, on. So much be going on. So you be on the move every day. Doing yeah, I be on the move every day, day doing something. And for real, because I move so much. The minute I stop moving, everybody around me be like, you good? You all right? Yeah, yeah. Like, damn, I'm, I'll be like in a chill sometime. Like, right. I'll be running around all day. So yeah. if I'm like kind of chilling and shit, niggas be looking at me like, yo, you good? Like, yeah, I'm good. But a day in the life, man, it's just, it's something to see, man. That's all I can say. Like, it's, That's it's real. at the end of the day, I'm always inspired because I always have something going on. Like, I'm never a person that's like fishing for inspiration. Inspiration is everywhere everywhere like this shit is inspiring like i know i'm definitely going to talk about this in a rap somewhere oh yeah yeah 100%. hey i hope you do man oh that'd yeah be, you know i'm gonna shout you that'd out be great hey i respect that man. yeah that'd, for sure that'd be great all right so when was your first concert man your first show oh my first real show mm -hmm. was november 7th uh -oh. 2014 okay at the agora we opened up for that white dude stitches i gotta write this down y'all yeah, it was November seventh, twenty fourteen, at the Agora, man. We opened up for the uh, the crazy white boy with the fucking AK on his face, mm -hmm. stitches and shit. We opened up for him, and we sold. I don't know. They used to have niggas sell tickets at the Agora. I don't think they do it no more. We sold like maybe like a decent amount of tickets, but it wasn't that many people there. Right. And we got there at like the sound check was at like seven. We didn't go on till like ten o'clock. So when we first get yeah. there. You know, I'm nervous. I'm hype and shit. I'm like, oh, my first show, we in the car, we drinking, we rehearsing and shit. We go in here, sitting here for like three hours. I'm sleepy. I'm getting tired now. Like, man, but we went out there. I killed that shit, though, man. Like, I bodied that shit. Like, my performance is way better now. But looking back, it was just like some of them shows was so special to me because I used to be like so nervous. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I went years without rapping in front of anybody. So when I started rapping, I just jumped out there, out the window. Like, well, I'm about to record. I'm about to perform right. in front of people and shit. Right, right. And it just, like, I still get that same rush, but that rush used to just be like, it used to be crazy and That's shit. Real. But yeah, it was November 7th, 2014. 2014. I'll never forget that shit. I'm glad he remembered the date, too, and everything. Hell yeah, I still got the ticket stub. I keep little uh, nostalgic shit like that. Hey. And HMF, you remember you you and Ryan got into some shit? You was acting like a sucker that day. He ain't show up. That's probably like one of the only shows he missed and shit, but he did not show up for the first show. It happens, my nigga man. Ryan was on stage. It was me. It was me, Ryan, my nigga Doobie, mm -hmm. and my little brother uh, who started LFTG with me, Cass Solo. Oh, hell, let's go back to LFTG, man. Oh, yeah. Tell us about the story of that. How that got started, man. So the story, man, it's just pretty much an organic story, man. Mm -hmm. The two of my close friends, HMF, Cass Solo, myself, we linked up in my mother's garage, and we just started doing music. And I'm like, yo, what we gonna call this shit? I'm like, yeah, live from the garage, LFTG, man. That's and real. it just stuck. And yeah. that's been that's been the brand since 2014. Uh, so y'all been rolling ever since then. Yeah. But you know, they've been my brothers from way back. Yeah. And like Chad used to make beats. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, I used to rap, but I used to never like really pay attention to this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because he was really like my little cousin friend. Because he like a couple years younger than me and shit. So um, I told him and shit, he ended up coming through. Like the year before we actually started doing music, playing some beats, and I rapped for him and shit. And he like, oh shit, right. you know what I'm saying? But I was right. like, oh shit, I didn't know you really producing shit. Mm -hmm. So that summer we ended up linking up and um, just starting the whole shit. I respect that man. Carried yeah. on what? It's, we two, 2019, five years later. Yeah, shit. five years later, man. Yeah, and actually, uh, the anniversary for LFTG is my birthday. Oh, so that's June real. 7th, we plan to do a real big show. Okay, okay. Yeah. Hey, man, keep me posted. I'm pretty oh, sure yeah, I'm going to sure. see it. Oh, see yeah, you're going to see it. Yeah, it's going to be out here for sure. I'm going to see it, man. Hell, yeah. So what's your goal for 2019, man? Um, Mark, I got a lot of goals for 2019. Right. Um, One of my big goals for 2019, I want to get in the House of Blues. Mm -hmm. I want to perform in the House of Blues mm -hmm. stage. I know a couple people that have done it. Right, right. That's a big goal for me. Uh, Shoot more visuals. Uh, we putting together a tour. Um, just to keep just keep my foot on their necks, man. Just right. keep my foot on the gas, like just no breaking, like just keeping this momentum I got going. I definitely want to win this scene magazine shit, like yeah. that'd be a dope look. Yep. And I'm not really one, and I just said this on a bunch of songs. I was just uh, saying this before we pulled up. I got a song where it was like, 
Every stage I touch, I dominate it. Yeah. Never been nominated. But now hey. I can't even say that and shit. Because n- you are Yeah, because now, now I've been nominated. But it's like, win or lose, mm-hmm. it's still a good look for me. No matter what. And I always try to keep the mind state like, Everything has a positive, man, and I focus on the positive. So if I win, it's a positive. But then even if I was to not win and shit, which we not even thinking, we 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 about to win, we winning for sure. We winning. But if we didn't win, it's still a good look, man. Like the experience. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Just to you know be out here, have my name out here circulating, and that was the whole goal from it uh, from the very beginning was to build this buzz, and now we doing it. And I feel like I'm at the level two musically. I'm like just really confident like right now as far as like everything that I'm putting out there is coming out so organic. Right. It's just flowing like I'm in a real good creative mood. I'm about to say so, so that's some of my goals. So right now, like, you know, you've been going through the past few months by you just dropping music assistant. Dropping, you've been dropping, out dropping. here. So you do fight right now, this is like a of course you wanna keep on elevating, but it's like yeah. a I'm trying to say put this in words. Like uh yeah. you, you going to the mountaintop right now pretty yeah, much. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a level up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we definitely leveling up. Yeah. For sure. I think a lot of things that I've been putting out here speaking into existence, like I'm starting to see some fruit growing the tree. Mm-hmm. I can't necessarily pick the fruit yet. Yeah, yeah. But you know, but I see like I planted this tree, I've been watering, yep. it's been going through seasons, now it's growing. Now I can see like, oh shit, so oh, shit starting to bud and yep. shit. We can't pick it just yet. But it's happening, yeah. That's definitely, real. definitely That's leveling real. up. So what's your goal for the next five years, man? And the next five years is to definitely keep pushing. And then I want this to be a full career. Like, it's going to be a full career as far as, like, sustaining myself all the way. Like, mm-hmm. I all I don't have to worry about getting another part-time job. I don't have to worry about anything besides keep working because this is paying for my life. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. And my, my buzz is getting bigger. You know what I'm saying? The, the brand is expanding. And just keep expanding. So five years, I definitely see us like doing national tours, international real, tours. Like, real. and I know that for sure because a lot of the money that artists make, you make it on the road. That's what that's what Jay off, Cole said. Off shows yep. and off merch. And my show game right now, mm-hmm. this shit is getting so polished. It's so polished. It's like man, I know I can go perform across the globe. Like, real. cause this shit is entertaining. It's a good show. It's good music. So I know I can eat off this. That's real, man. Yeah. So, how many shows do you do a month, man? Cause you just did one set back yeah. on March 22nd, I think you did. Uh, yeah, there. March 22nd, yeah. man. We did just another day at Cam House. Shout out to Joe. Shout out to everybody that came through. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, like legit shows or like open mic performances. Even though I give my all at those both. Count, those count too, bro. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm probably doing like maybe three shows a week, man. Three shows a week? Three shows a week. Probably doing, and then like maybe like two major ones. But it could possibly be more than that. It's probably like four. Sheesh. We probably do like four performances a week. And then a month right now, we're just trying to just focus on doing my own shows. Right, right. Like, when you come up in the game and shit, like I was saying before last time I was here, it's these things called, I call them rapper conferences. And a rapper conference is like, bam, me and Jay, we get together, we going to rent out this venue, and we going to book all these rappers. Mm-hmm. They going to pay us $50 to perform. Mm-hmm. All the people got to pay to get in and shit. Right, right. Everybody here is a rapper. She a rapper. He a rapper. To everybody a rapper and shit. You can't build no fan base like that. So it's like I was doing that at first, but now it's more so since I've been out so much and gathering a fan base, just do my own show. Then there's no, I don't have to worry about I'm going to keep the money for my own self to put back into the shit and, you know, just do my own thing, man. Like if it's a good collaboration, it's a good collaboration. I'll do some shit, maybe sell some tickets if it's right. Right. But just right now, we just doing our own show and just keeping pushing like we did. Uh. Just another day at Cam House at Joe's. The next big event I got coming up, we doing a 420 event down at Red Lion Tattoo. Word? Yeah, 420. So 420, get down to Red Lion Tattoo. We um doing a 420 event. So from 11 a.m. to 7, we'll be doing tattoo specials. And then from 8 p.m. until, I'll be hosting um, DJ Cooley High. Shout out to my man, DJ Cooley High. He'll be on the ones and twos, keeping the vibes going. We got Chef Tiff going to be in the house with the... Uh, Infused hors d'oeuvres okay. like real food, like infused with TAC. We're gonna have a blunt rolling contest. I got a downhill collective coming through, tribe coming through. Oh, shit. Hey, I got a couple of them. I think Dab said he was coming through. I got a couple, uh, couple performances coming through. Oh, of course, I'm gonna do my thing, right? And it's gonna go, man. So, it we just, like it is. yeah, we just doing our own thing right now, man. Like, really just waving our flag, like, nigga, we here, That's we real. out here, we moving, you know That's what I'm real. saying. For real. And like really building this shit brick by brick. Like, Literally. like this is like legit 
like every day just keep on pushing like i don't give a fuck if a nigga don't got because i don't got a lot of followers on the gram all the work and shit that i know people that, that know me and shit i don't have a big internet presence but in the street in real life like niggas that's know matters, me like yeah. and niggas support me and shit like that and that's what really matter like fuck all that shit like a lot of niggas buying we know a lot of you niggas <laughs> buying views For and real? buying likes and shit that shit buying followers like what's the point man just for image man fuck an image like no that's real though. Yeah, i would never get the shit. point of buying followers and all that shit man just so you could look the part like yeah. i was saying it's about the image and people buy into certain things yep. and think certain shit is hot yep. because that's what it look like like mm -hmm. fuck that shit man we ain't buying shit yep. fuck that shit we building this shit organically from the uh from the grassroots man for real respect i'll be telling people man i mean if you're not booming on Instagram, social media, you don't do it in person, like how you said. Yeah. And then when you do it in person, guess what's going to boom eventually, man? Your Instagram, your Facebook, all that shit going to yep. just rise. And it's like, how yeah. do you have 10,000 followers, but you can't sell out a venue for 100 people? You know what? I've been wanting to ask that question a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or how you got 45,000 followers and you don't break... 5,000 likes You know what I'm saying exactly. Like this the I ain't no mathematician Yeah I know I, I But the it. numbers Don't add up man Yep it sure does Something doesn't add up man We know you niggas <laughs> Is capped out man Everybody let us say What's up son Everybody let us say No cap uh -huh. A lot of you niggas Is capped out man uh, But whatever man It's each his own man Exposed <laughs> Exposed man Alright man You can meet anybody Dead or alive Who will you meet Damn dead or alive mm -hmm. I have me Pac man Real Yeah I got me I got me Pac man What would you like, talk to him about bro I just want to just, just just chop it with him, man. I just want to kick it. Really, I want to hit the studio. I want to smoke some weed, hit the studio. Like, I just feel like we would have kicked it. Like, that nigga love to be in the studio. We running from show to show, just right. getting it. Like, you know, I just love to have a conversation with him, man. One of my favorite artists. Okay. Oh, yeah. What's your top three artists, man? Top three artists right now. Yep. Off the top of my head, I got to say J. Cole, mm -hmm. Currency, mm -hmm. and a number three. Who would I throw in there for number three? J. Cole, Currency. I've been listening to a lot of Nipsey. Like, hey, Nipsey, I just started listening to Nipsey. Man. Yeah, I just got hip too. Like, I ain't gonna say I was a super fan. Like, I he was on the same double XL cover with J. Cole. And I think uh what was it Wiz and all them niggas was on there that year and shit. And when was this? This was like 09. Oh, okay. I don't yeah, know. right. Yeah. He was he started <laughs> yeah. he was buzzing in, but I wasn't really following him. Yeah, yeah. But that um that victory lap shit, that shit was man. Victory that that shit nice. got the Grammy to me, like yeah. rap album of the year. Right. That shit came out of the good year, really inspired me. I used to play that shit every day. So I'm gonna say uh J. Cole, Currency, and Nipsey. That's top three. Real. That's real. Top three niggas right now, man. What's your favorite uh project by J. Cole? Uh, Forest Hill Drive, twenty uh, fourteen Forest Hill Drive. Finally, somebody said that's my favorite yeah, one. that's my favorite one. That's Finally. like that's like cold at like at its best. That's how I feel too. Yeah, man, for real. Like er everything, it kind of reminds you of like next level. Uh, Friday Night Lights. Yep. Yeah, kind of it kind of gave you that. yeah got you gave you them type of vibes. Yeah, I love it. I think it's a classic, man. That's I love cool. it. I still play it to this day. Word, because a lot of people always tell me Friday Night Lights. I'm like, man, I like Forest Hill Drive. Yeah, I like Forest Hill Drive. Like that intro. I'm big on intros too. Like yep. how you start your album off yep. or your mixtape, that shit means so much, man. That first song, honestly, from, it do for, for it me do. listening uh, as a listener too, man. Yeah, I'm big on intros. The, the man. Intro, yeah, it gotta either you gotta come hard on it, or you gotta come smooth like a J Cole. Yeah, it gotta be good. It set the tone. Yeah. So yep. yeah, whatever type of tone you gotta set in the intro, but yeah, that's one of my favorites. Okay, for sure. So if you was trapped on the island for one year, full year, what three albums or mixtapes would you listen to? Definitely bring in 2014 Forest Hill Drive. Yep. Definitely bring in that. Uh, what's something else I could always play, like a whole album? Damn. Like a full, just a full joint. I need some type of instrumentals or something, like. That's gonna drive me crazy if I don't got like you no know, instrumentals. What, I need like a chill hop lo -fi mix or something. Okay. Yeah, like some shit like that. Yep. And then and then like for three. Okay. The third one. Damn, what do I want to hear? One more. I need one more. Cause I'm a fucking island. You know what I could play almost any time of the day? I like uh Currency's Pilot Talk Three. Pilot Talk Three. I gotta write that down. Yeah, I, check I, that I, out. I didn't hear that one. Yeah. yeah. Out of the whole Pilot Talk collections, I like three. I could play that like almost any time. Yeah, he made a collection of these. Shit. Well, he did his first his first one like legit albums and shit was Pilot Talk. Mm -hmm. Then it was Pilot Talk two. Mm -hmm. and then it was three. 
Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge yeah. currency fan. Yeah, yeah. Like if anybody yeah. was trying to, I ain't really trying to sign with nobody, but Jet Life, them niggas call for me. I'm I'm down. I'm going. Shit. Hell yeah. I fuck with it, man. I feel like I do good over there, man. You would, bro. Yeah, you for would, real. Man. I I got another question for you, man. All right. What are your five keys to success? Um, five keys to success. Yep. Key number one, man, get up early. Mm-hmm. Get up early and get shit done in the day. Like get shit done. Number two, you need to be consistent with whatever you're doing, like day in and day out. You need to be consistent. It is definitely days where you're not going to feel like getting up and doing what you want to do. You need to get up and do what you want to do, man, because you will thank yourself later. Number three, you need to be dedicated, Mm -hmm. like not just consistent. You need to have consistent dedication. Like you need to put your all into what you're trying to do so you can get the all back. Like don't put in minimal effort. Um, number four, which really should have been number two, but for the sake of whatever, you need to be passionate. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm very passionate about making music, about just making a career out of stuff. I'm just a passionate person in general. Real, like, real, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I love, I love hard. Like, when I hate, I don't fuck with niggas very passionately. Mm-hmm. I'm a very passionate person. So, you need to put your passion in your work. And then number five, you need to take it serious and you need to not take it that serious. How? So how would you do that, man? How you, like, all right. And I've been saying this because it's been like a recurrent thing. Like when I with, with rapping and shit, I feel like for a minute, niggas was putting me in a box. Like, oh, you one of them old school trying to be super lyrical, boom, bap type shit. And it's like, no, not really. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or every song I do has to be so serious. But I feel like people take it like that because I'm coming off so passionate yep. on the mic and shit. It's like, damn, this nigga serious as fuck. Like, <laughs> it, it is not that deep. You know what I'm saying? Then at the same time, it's just about having fun with it. Like, I don't want to be doing music and then it's like, I'm so serious that I'm not having fun in the studio and shit. Like, I be clowning in the studio. Like, if you was to hear the track with everything on there, I'm laughing and shit. Like, we talking shit. Like, you can hear niggas in the back and shit. Like, it's a good vibe and shit. So, I think you need to take yourself serious, but not that serious, man, to the point that you're not having fun with it, man. Like, we trying to be successful and this is a career and we want to be professional. Like, you want to carry yourself professional and shit, but we don't want to be here like, this is the, this is the, uh, today on (laughs) your lavish journey, we have Malik X here and you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I don't want it to be stiff. So, yeah, definitely take yourself serious, but not that serious, man. I feel it. I and do. I think them some keys, man. That's one thing I do want to tell you, man. I love the passion in your music. Yeah. And that's, that's one thing I got to see, the inspiration, passion. That's, I intertwine all those. And I, yeah. love, I personally love that. Thank honest, you. Bro. Thank you. And yeah. I, I, want, I want niggas to feel it. Yeah, like, when you hear this shit, it, yeah. yeah, you're supposed to feel that shit. Like, because it's coming from such a genuine place. Yeah. Yeah. And it's supposed to inspire and motivate you. Like, when you play a Malik X track, you're supposed to be like, hell yeah, nigga. First you might be, you, you might go to work and be like, no, fuck this shit. I'm about to, For real? I'm about to start a business. I'm about to, that shit I was wanting to do in my life, man. I'm about to do that shit that's real what up what up granddad who is that what's the auntie Rini, grandma everybody bj k hey. fucking all my family man what's going on that's real man that's real keep it going on brother oh, yeah. let me see i got one more qu- no two more questions for two you two more man. questions what up are you considered an introvert or extrovert ah <laughs> i'm like both i'm like in the middle yep, yep. it might be because i'm a gemini like sometimes i like to be out here in the public and sometimes i'll be like all right just want to be alone and do my own thing so, yeah, I think I'm like both. Oh, you're yeah, a Gemini? I, yeah, I'm a Gemini. Oh, that's my mom, Duke. She the yep. same way, right in the middle, introvert and extrovert. Hell, yeah. Okay. It's that balance, man, that duality. For real? Yeah. And last but not What's least. What's up, Bunty? What makes a great life? What makes a great life? Yes, sir. Um, I don't know. I feel like what makes a great life, man, is like being true to yourself and, and living in your purpose, like whatever that, whatever that may be. Mm-hmm. Like... When like I was saying before, like about the job shit, like when I wasn't doing music and I wasn't pursuing my passion and walking in my purpose, I was kind of like unhappy, like a little bit kind of like depressed a little bit because I didn't I didn't have no direction in life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So certain things that was making me mad, it was really like due to my own self and shit because life is a choice. You know what I'm saying? Like I chose to be working at this job and I can't be mad because they are paying me even if I don't like this shit. But I don't want that shit to start trickling into my own life because... You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not taking the initiative to do what I want to do. So I think this if, if you live in your purpose, man, and you be true to yourself, you know what I'm saying, with certain things, I feel like I feel like that's a good life. And definitely have good people around you. Like I have a lot of great supportive people around me who support my dreams, you know, who look out for me on a personal level. 
you know what I'm saying, to do a lot of things for me. You need good people around you, good energy, and, and good weed, man. You definitely need good weed, man, and sex. That You know what I'm saying? It's not the most important thing in the world, but it is important. It's therapeutic. It's therapeutic, man. It's very therapeutic. And um, I think that's it, man. My brother Malik X, man. You got anything you want them to know? Uh, what is it to say? Extra, what he go off the extra off the green? Um, anything I want to say to the people? Yep, go ahead. Um, Motion, do whatever you got to say, man. All right, man. I need you, everybody that's checking this out, need to go follow me on Instagram and Twitter at King underscore LFTG. Look up the hashtag who is Malik X, hashtag ambition never dies. I'm out here, man. I'm coming to a motherfucking city near you, wherever the stage is, wherever the weed is. You can probably catch me there, man. I'm out here in the street. Shout out to my man Jay Gaines, man, for having Appreciate me come it. through, man. It's always dope when we link up. Appreciate it, bro. Shout out to Hippie House Plugs, man. Representation matters. Shout out to all my niggas supporting, man. Shout out to all the niggas that's not supporting. Shout out to people that's going to run this back. Like, damn, <laughs> man, how this nigga... <laughs> Shout out to niggas that's running this back. Like, damn, this nigga just do the interview so smooth and yep. shit. You know, oh, yeah, hold on. Big shout out. You go know, ahead, you know ahead, I'm repping every day. Big shout out to the big homie, yep. Days One, the owner of Red Line Tattoo. Shout out to my man, B. Shout out to Kush. Shout out to everybody, man. The whole squad, man. We out here, man. The takeover continues. Ambition don't ever die, nigga. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, man. Appreciate you, I bro. appreciate it, bro. I appreciate you, brother. No doubt. Man, like he said, stay tuned to everything he has coming out. It's stay going. Stay tuned, man. Be on the lookout. It's going. He's stepping on we next out. all 2019, 2020. And collecting the check. Don't forget that part. It's going. Well, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, thank you for watching or listening to Lavish Journey Podcast, where we create, inspire, and spread greatness. We out of here. And we the landlords of the building. You niggas is just the tennis. Oh. This is only the beginning, the beginning. The base is loaded, so I'm swinging for the fences. Hit it out of the park, took a shot in the dark. But every day I'm at the range, I'm never missing my mark. I'm raising short, like I should be endorsed by Gillette. I guarantee to raise the stock, they better send me a check. In 2019, you know I got my foot on their neck.